Hyundai is taking electrification seriously. Their newly announced all-electric brand Ioniq has been created to take a big chunk of the EV market, claiming 10% of all global EV sales by 2025. And in today's video, we'll dive into all we know about Ionic, including models and release dates. I'll also whip out my spreadsheet to take a stab at power, battery capacity, range, and pricing. And will Ionic have what it takes to be a major EV player? Well, let's find out. <laughs> Welcome back Luxurious Slew, your name is Kirk. If you're new to the channel and I used to just cover Japanese autos, I'm starting to foray a little bit into Korean as well. So make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my upcoming news and reviews on Korean and Japanese vehicles. Over at the Hyundai newsroom, Hyundai Motor announces Ionic brand dedicated to EVs, opening new chapter for customer-centric EV experiences. Now Hyundai will introduce three innovative Ionic EV models over the next four years, starting in early 2021 with the Ionic 5, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. This is all based off the eGMP platform. Now, Hyundai plans on selling 1 million units of battery electric vehicles and take 10% of the market for the global EV sales by 2025, and it aims to become the world's third largest automaker of eco-friendly vehicles by 2025 with 560,000 battery electric sales in addition to fuel cell electric sales. I looked at Kia's page as well because they had an announcement uh, when it comes to battery electric vehicles as well. They're hoping to sell 500,000 themselves. So, and we know Genesis is going to be announcing their first EV in the next year or two but yeah things are definitely heating up for evs for the korean automakers now the eGMP platform which all their evs going forward will be based off will enable fast charging capability and plentiful driving range so they're going to have highly adjustable seats wireless connectivity unique features such as glove box design as drawers and a platform paradigm shift will extend into user interfaces that will be simple, intuitive, and ergonomically designed. Now, Ionic isn't new for Hyundai. They've had the Ionic since 2016, I believe, with the hybrid, the plug-in hybrid, and the fully electric version of that car, but it was a model. It would almost be like Toyota creating the Prius line of fully electric vehicles known as a Prius, because that's what that vehicle originally came out for. At least that's what my belief was that the Hyundai Ionic was there to compete directly with the Prius. Well, they're going way past the Prius now. They're trying to take on Tesla. And if you guys want to know what Ionic came from, it comes from a fusion of Ion and Unique. How sophisticated, but I really I think it's a cool name. And I feel like Cadillac is kind of taking from that a little bit with all their Eek models, Celestique, etc. I don't know, they're all ridiculous sounding. Now here's the fun part, Ionic 5, 6, and 7. What are these models that they are talking about? Well, the range is gonna be all numerically based with even numbers used for sedans and odd numbers used for SUVs. Pretty simple, pretty easy to follow. Whereas I mentioned Cadillac's electric lineup is going to be just a mismatch of different uniques out there. <laughs> Celestique, Monique. So the first Ionic model for the brand is going to be the Ionic 5, which is a CUV that will launch in early 2021. It's based on the concept EV45, which debuted last year at the Frankfurt Auto Show. I just wanna pause and talk about this concept real quick. Um, I would love for these pixelated, it's almost like um, individual LEDs that light up the entire front and back. It looks super retro, very cool, very customizable. And that would be super cool that you could, Ionic let you customize the headlights and the taillights, which I don't think they, that would ever pass here in the United States because it's so safety regulated. But the doors open up uh, like suicide style, so they invite you into the big cabin. The next car does that as well, we'll talk about. Uh, the, the seats swivel in these cars, which is pretty cool. And I hope they're able and they're able to stick with that from the concept. Now we got spy shots that I talked about in my Genesis video because Genesis and Kia are both gonna have very similar vehicles to this Ionic 5. It's probably just gonna be a slightly different body panel, slightly different badging, slightly different interiors. And based off the spy shots, it looks a lot like the Frankfurt concept, the EV45. So I'm really excited and I can't believe it's gonna be coming 
uh, early 2021. Uh, the earlier, the better. I'm really excited. I'm going to talk about pricing and power and capacity of this thing here in a little bit as well. So just a year later, Hyundai is going to introduce the Ionic 6. The sedan, the Ionic 6, is going to be based off the Prophecy concept unveiled last March. And that Prophecy concept, the back end, the middle part of it definitely looks like a Porsche. The front end almost looks more like a Tesla. So you take the Taycan and you mix it with the Tesla Model 3 or Tesla Model S and that's what this Prophecy concept, or I should say this Ionic 6 is gonna look like. I hope they keep it very similar to the original design. Now on the interior of that car, there's not even like a steering wheel. So of course they're gonna be adding normal car features to that that concept but it, it looks really cool and if they're able to keep that exterior styling i think they got a successful sport sporty ev sedan that's going to really take the market by storm and we'll talk about the power etc here in a little bit of that car and lastly the ionic 7 is a large suv planned for early 2024 so they'll take a year break between 2022 so 2023 no new ionic models but in 2024 there are they are definitely bringing out a large probably seven seater suv we don't have anything about this ionic 7 i'll give you my guesses for it but we just have that one sample picture that was released to us with the ionic unveiling and yeah it definitely looks big and the lights are very unique on it now moving on with all evs really the heart of every single ev out there it's not the motors but they're important it's not the technology although that's important it's the battery batteries are the name of the game when it comes to evs and hyundai has lg chem the local source they are of course korean and lg chem has some of the best battery technology out there in the world uh, rivaling Panasonic and probably rivaling the Chinese companies like BYD and CATL. So yeah, there's their battery battery supply and it's going to be cutting edge and very, very competitive with the global market for EV batteries. And moving forward again, Hyundai Mobis will extend supply of EV parts to rival automakers. So Hyundai is very vertically int integrated, just like Toyota is. Toyota owns like 50% of just about every single parts manufacturer for them. Hyundai has done a lot of the same. And Mobis is one of those manufacturing companies that provides a lot of those parts. Well, Mobis producing more parts than Hyundai can even assume into the brand. So they are going to be selling these these Hyundai Mobis parts, these EV parts to other automakers. And what you guys have been waiting for, at least I've been waiting for to talk to you guys about is my state of the art spreadsheet here about EV capacities and power for the Ionic lineup and some potential models and yeah, just fun stuff. Okay, let's get into it. Top left here, here are the motors. Now these first two motors here, the small and medium motor already exist. Uh, they already exist in the Ionic EV, and they exist in the Hyundai Kona. I think the Kia Nero has the same setup for this medium-sized motor, and it just uh, extrapolate from 100 to 150 to 200. I don't know if there, as far as I know, there's no models within the Hyundai lineup at this point in time that has a 200 kilowatt motor, which is 268 horsepower, but it's coming, and this is going to be seen in a ton of their vehicles we'll talk about. You can also combine these uh, motors together to get all wheel drive, one at each uh, axle, and then you have 335 horsepower combining the medium and the small. The large and the small, you can see to 392, large and the medium to 469, and large and large to 536. And of course there are additional combinations. I just felt like those were the most logical combinations based for the American market. Battery capacity, we have a couple knowns here. The 38.3 kilowatt hour battery, that is currently in the Hyundai Ionic EV, and that gets up to 170 miles of range. And the 64 kilowatt battery that's in the Kona and the Kia Nero gets up to 258 miles. Efficiency is gonna go down as the larger the battery gets because the weight goes up. Uh, but I think 320 miles is capable if they have an 85 kilowatt battery. And if they have a big old 100 kilowatt battery, you might be able to squeeze out a little bit more mileage, 360 miles there. Maybe more, just depends on the package. Now, Ionic 3 and 4, that's going to be their smallest vehicles. 
Uh, we don't have any confirmation of this, but I feel like this is where they need to have the mass market adoption, but it's gotta make sense price-wise. I don't think these are gonna be out probably till 2025. They could be very conservative here. Take the 134 horsepower motor that we see in the current Ionic EV and for the base model, pricing at 25 grand. I know that's a lot of money, but we're talking EVs here and this will make it competitive just depending on how things go in the next five years. So I could see this being front wheel drive only, 170 miles. It's pretty much a modernized version of the Ionic EV. And then if we look at the medium motor, this would be like a replacement for the Hyundai Kona and you get the 201 horsepower, the longer range with the larger battery pack they're able to stick in there, pricing hopefully they're able to keep it around 30K. Ionic 5 and 6, which these are the guaranteed models that we have coming, but I'm going to take a stab. We don't have any official numbers. This is all, guys, if I haven't said take it with a grain of salt, because this is all just my guess, but I think they're educated guesses. You know, I'm not, I'm not a, a complete noob when it comes to EVs and how these things are made. And we already have some evidence here of these, sorry, these motors and batteries existing. So I'm just extrapolating from these figures. 201 horsepower, that's the medium sized motor. That'd be the entry motor for the Ionic 5 and 6. 5 being the crossover, 6 being the sedan. Of course, around 258 miles of range, probably a little bit more in the 6 since it's a sedan, a little bit more aerodynamic. Pricing, if they can come out with 35K to complete to compete with that 35K uh, Tesla Model 3 and Tesla Model Y, I think that'd be very attractive. And if you look at the Ionic 5 and 6 with the all-wheel drive, they combine a, a medium and a small motor, it gets you to 335 horsepower, put the bitter, bigger battery pack in here, the 85 kilowatt battery, uh, price would be 45 to 50 grand. And then they have a performance version with 392 horsepower and 360 miles of range with a 100 kilowatt battery. And then you have a 50,000 plus price tag. Now the big boys, now we know the Ionic 7 is coming, but they could also have a flagship sedan like the Kia K900 or the Genesis G90 size vehicle flagship sedan. Base would be the 268 horsepower coming in uh, at 40K with a large motor, uh, 258 miles with the medium sized battery pack there. Medium plus the small motors gets you the 335 horsepower. 40 to $50,000, 320 miles. Large plus the small motor gets you to 392, which matches the Ionic 5 and 6 performance. This would be a $55,000 range vehicle. And then we're talking about these really high end options here. Uh, you've combined the large and the medium motor, probably large in the back. You get 345 miles. Uh, with a 100 kilowatt battery, $60,000, probably, maybe even a little bit more. And then you combine both large motors and you get 330 miles. Why does the range go down? Because the motors are larger, a little bit heavier. And then 70,000 plus US dollars for the full fat, 536 horsepower. Now, down at the bottom, I have the pricing numbers, which I've listed and I've already spoken about. But I feel like the ideal pricing for EVs to start taking over, it needs to meet uh, the current ICE market, uh, and if not, beat the current ICE market. So roughly each single model needs to be about $5,000 cheaper for it to compete head on with ICE models and for more people to adopt EVs, for them to be a little bit more practical, a little bit more usable and more budget friendly to the average Joe. So yeah, this spring, probably 2021, Ionic will have the Ionic 5 out on the market and hopefully it's widely available. The Hyundai Kona, uh, Kona it's been well received, but it hasn't been widely available. I've heard of ridiculous allotments to uh, not only the United States, but especially in Europe, like it's a unicorn car, it really doesn't exist. It's more of a compliance car to me. Uh, their emissions figures or whatever figures but this is totally different here this these are mass market vehicles they're teaming up with lg and guys we're going to be seeing not only more and more evs hit the market but a lot of very compelling products from hyundai here with their ionic brand and i feel like that is the smartest way to go for them to be honest because people are just gonna be like oh you know that's just a that's just the hyundai ev over there but if they're like Oh gosh, that's that cool Ionic brand. All they make is electric cars. It's like a Korean Tesla. You know, that gets a little bit more excitement, gets people definitely stepping away from the Hyundai brand, giving a unique focus to EV connectivity, technology, 
and sustainability. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the comments. If you haven't smashed the like button, go ahead and do that. I appreciate it. you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting me. I know I've had a few of you pushing back that you don't want me to cover uh, the Korean autos, but I'm telling you what, guys, it gets me really excited. And if I'm excited, it's going to make the news exciting, at least to some extent. And most of you guys have supported me massively with this transition over to covering Korean autos as well. I'm not just going to focus on Korean autos. That's silly. Um, you know, Japanese autos, I have a huge soft spot for. I always will They'll always be kind of like my number one. But man, Hyundai, Ioniq, Genesis, Kia, they're definitely worth talking about in the same room with the Japanese automakers. So thank you guys so much for watching. You're making my dreams come true. Uh, I'm just living the best life ever and got you guys to thank for that. So I will catch you guys in the next video. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Peace out.